good morning from another beautiful day in central Portugal and today is the first day in another week of an insane heat wave that took us into the early 40 degrees it was really really tough but with the insulation we actually survived this time as opposed to last time it's such a beautiful morning and we've been on the farm for just over a month now that I thought I would do a farm tour and just show you how things have grown, what has happened on the farm since the, the first farm tour I gave and I thought we could do this on a monthly basis since things grow so fast on the farm and it's hard to keep up with everything, how it grows and how quickly things go on the farm. So let's start here we'll do this on a monthly basis so you guys can also see how things are go growing and how things are going on the farm and what i'm doing it's a pear that just fell down hello and welcome i'm christine an expat originally from south africa i moved to portugal in october of 21 and i started my journey in search of my forever farm in portugal I saw over 30 properties and it took me about six months of searching, but then I finally found the one. This is my adventure as a solo expat on a farm in central Portugal with my two fur kids, Shakti and Shiva. I've never owned or lived on a farm, but I moved to Portugal in the hope of fulfilling a lifelong dream in finding an open space, subsistence farming, and a safer, better life. Now that we have found our farm, the second stage of our journey begins. I have to figure out farm life while renovating an agricultural structure to make it habitable and turn it into a comfortable home for me and my fur kids. Follow along our journey. This is Girl Meets Farm. So we're starting here in the driveway with the pear trees and um, they have been growing and ripening speedily so speedily in fact that i can't keep up with harvesting them and i also don't have places to store them because once they're harvested i've realized and i've noticed that they ripen so quickly that um i just don't have time to eat them and if i keep i've only got one box to keep them in the fridge and that's the all, only space i have for the, in the fridge as well so i'm definitely going to need to invest in some bigger fridges to just keep the harvest that i have in the future for sure so this year i wasn't too concerned about what i harvest and what i don't harvest usually i i really do not enjoy food waste i think it's it's an awful thing so i don't really like doing that but this year i knew that there was going to be some of that as i get used to what's going on how things are growing what needs to happen and all of that so i kind of prepared myself for that so i i realized there's a lot of pears and of course i could give these away to neighbors friends i could post it on facebook groups and you know we can do barter swaps or whatever pears for something or something for in exchange for something but honestly i just haven't had enough energy to even put into that and think what to do or harvest enough things and then just do it so here we are and this is the situation <laughs> anyway here we go back to the pear trees so there are three pear trees in production and i have noticed that the middle one very early on i noticed just before it started uh producing pears that it the leaves all had these black spots on them you can't really see them as clearly now as when it was a little bit earlier on in the season but and some of them have disappeared so that's actually a good thing but what i realized is that is blight and i wasn't quite sure how that was going to go off with um pear production and what those pears would be like but my feeling is that the blight, and look, I speak under correction, if any of you guys know better than me, let me know in the comments, please. But the pears are all a little bit not as healthy, and I'll show you, as some of the other pear trees. I mean, okay, so that one has ripened on, on the tree. But in general, I feel like all these pears carry those same black marks of the blight that were on the leaves 
some part of the tree like this section seems to be okay and you can even see the leaves are looking a lot healthier but even when I bite into these pears when they look great they really unfortunately in the center they're just not very good which brings us to the other two pear trees this one's pears are quite small but still relatively healthy and they all come in this size well some of them i see have some spots and i've heard that blight can be transferred between trees so maybe that's why but i haven't really seen spots on the leaves and then my favorite one which is actually producing really healthy tree healthy pears is this one um and I would like it to stay that way. So far the pears are absolutely beautiful. They're like a nice little size. They're not huge. Some of them are, are quite big actually. And I think I need to harvest again. I've been trying to harvest on a daily basis. But these guys are really nice and they're super healthy. And I would like this tree to stay as healthy as it is at the moment. If you guys know anything about blight specifically in trees and if it will carry over or what I can do to keep this tree at least healthy for the future, let me know in the comments. While we're down here by the driveway, this is also where the fruit trees are. So let's start on the fruit trees and I'll show you guys how they're doing. The fruit trees are doing well. I think they're thriving. The two baby clementines, which is this one and that one, are still growing nicely. This one is another peach tree. And he looks like he needs a little bit of oil of something for his leaves. But otherwise, I think he, they're pretty much outgrowing whatever illness they had. The one that used to be a little shriveled up guy, which is also a peach tree, has actually recovered pretty well. Then the two plum trees, which is this one and that one over there, have been carrying beautiful plums. This tree I thought was possibly a peach tree, but I'm starting to wonder if it is also an almond tree possibly because its branches are growing outwards. But I haven't seen anything on it at all, so I'm not sure. The other plum tree looks like he's got a little bit of leaf curl. So I probably need to do something about that. But still carrying really, really beautiful fruits. They're very sweet. <laughs> now, these two trees I originally thought were two apple trees until well, I realized that the leaves are different. <laughs> and then I also noticed that this one was starting to carry some fruit. And on closer inspection, they really do not look like apples. So after some Google searches, I think this might be a loquat tree. And this one is definitely an apple tree because it still has, although it's always on the ground, it still has its little sign that says it is apples. So let me just stick it back in there. This one hasn't started carrying anything, but I think it will be a while before it does. The 
two fig trees down here have not actually carried any really big figs. The figs have stayed this size. So I'm wondering if if that's a thing, like why would some figs develop and, and others just not? If you know, drop a comment below to let me know. This one looks a bit like a peach tree, but it hasn't carried anything. And then, same for this one. <laughs> and this one, I figured, is also an almond tree. It's just real prashiva. And it has some fruits and one of them, I'm not tall enough, I don't know if you guys can see that, two of them are starting to dry out and eventually that will dry out and pop open and then inside will be the almond, I believe. <laughs> I've never really seen an almond tree before now. The tomatoes and the peppers are looking really, really good. Shiva, come away here boy, let me show the pepper. Good boy. Look at the size of this pepper, I think I need to harvest it. It feels like it's starting to... Good boy. To become a little bit soft from the sun. I strung up the tomatoes again yesterday. Just to make things a little bit more tidy so I can actually see what's happening down the rows here. It is watering day and they'll be getting a little bit more water again today. But some of them are starting to look really, really good. And coming in, changing color. There has unfortunately also been a little bit of fruit rot. But otherwise, I think they're doing well considering this terrible, terrible heat that we've had. The peach tree has finished its production of peaches. I'm not sure if it will give more. There's two peach trees that I've been pulling peaches from. Uh, but both of them no longer have fruits so I think it may be done for the season I'm not sure let's see what Shiva has discovered here hey boy what have you got must be careful in here right let's continue so we're at the well and there is this beautiful Grape trellis, vine trellis. Let's see if I can show you some of these grapes. These are what I'm thinking are the table grapes. Let me show you the size. So this is looking really, really nice. This is where the strawberries used to be kept and they're all gone. <laughs> this corner used to be a one half of the herb garden but it has become a little bit overgrown so as one of the projects one day when I have time I will come in here and just start cleaning and weeding things out and just getting a grip on what is actually going on in there and then the apple tree is over here by the wall and you can already start seeing the beautiful beautiful apples it is very close to harvest time for the apples they're small like with the pears but they're looking really healthy and as with the pears and as with everything else I've now learned 
not to just let them go until I think it's time to harvest them, but harvest them a little bit earlier if I do want to have to be able to eat these guys without just having them spoil on the tree. But they're looking really, really good. Up on this terrace, it's a, again a little bit overgrown, some weeding that needs to be done. I've started with some weeds on this little herb garden. The herbs have just died from the scorching sun. Some of them are still growing. I'm watering them a little bit more than anything else just to try and give them, well, keep them alive really. But it's looking a little bit barren here. Eventually I'll plant these out again as well. Can you guys believe how much things have grown since that strum? It's it's unbelievable. When the guy was strumming, he was telling me that uh, things shouldn't be growing a lot more. But, yeah. I don't know. It has. Over here we have the orange tree. And... Are they perennial? I'm not sure, but there's new baby oranges. It seems to be the tree that keeps on giving. There's uh, a couple of ripe ones, but I can never seem to get up there. <laughs> That's pretty high. That's about three or so meters off the ground. This tree is really tall. <gasps> But I don't know if you guys can see all the baby oranges that are on the way. So this tree seems to be happy. Let's go up to the upper terrace. We're at the upper terrace now and uh, this is actually a space that I've really come to like. It's just behind the orange tree, underneath this olive, just between these guys. I find this space incredibly peaceful. This is where the onions used to be planted, so this needs a good clean up as well. And I can definitely plant something else here. The beans used to be at the back there. Beans, I'm not sure what was there, but there was something. And the beautiful trellis continues with some of the table grapes. And these guys are still looking good and have escaped the sun's wrath. Some of them, you can see some of them have been a little bit affected by the sun. So the olives have started growing and can you see those? Some of them are a lot bigger. I'll take you to the lower terrace where the olives seem to be a lot bigger. At the lower terrace, the olive trees are also a little bit older, so I don't know if that makes a difference. But they're looking really good. They seem to be enjoying life and are happy. So here's another one of those figs that aren't producing figs and there's another one over there and another one over there. I'm not sure if they're males. We have two of these trees coming up and the fruit it almost seems to be ready, close to being ready. What are they called? Madueros? I'm not sure. A lot of people make liqueur from them, I think. Can you just eat them? I don't really know much about these fruits. Right, now let me show you what's happened to the vineyard. Due to this insane heat wave we've been getting, 
I've had a lot of grape loss and a lot of loss on the vines. So, can you guys see this? A lot of the, the grapes have literally just shriveled up and become raisins in the last week. It hasn't happened to all of them, but a lot of them. Some are growing a little bit better than others. But struggling. A lot of them are just struggling. Here's another one of those trees <laughs> and another one. So I have three and another weird fig tree. I wonder what makes some vines or grapes survive the heat better than others? Is it a varietal thing? Is it an age thing? Is it a leaf cover thing? Have you guys ever experienced any of that? I feel really really sad for the farmers that are relying on their harvests and crops this year as income because if this happened to me this probably happened to many others as well so i think there's going to be some big losses in harvest this year unless this is just one particular varietal that is possibly struggling i'm not sure some of them are looking so good I mean, his leaves are looking beautifully and healthy. Little grapes are going well down there. But some are completely shriveled up, as you guys have seen. As we come to the Laura Terrace, Yes, I still haven't strimmed this land, guys. <laughs> it is what it is. We also get to the older olive trees. The big boys. And as you can see, let me show you. Their olives are a lot bigger than the others. The same thing has happened to the grapes in the lower terrace vineyard. Some of them are still going. But some aren't coping as well. Thank you. 
younger one. I've not really been able to continue the strumming due to the heat wave. So a lot of this still needs to be cleaned up, well all of it really. The reason why I couldn't continue the strumming is because with the heat wave there was an increased fire risk. And we were put on an orange and some regions were put on a red alert which means that we weren't really allowed to strum unless you strum really early in the morning although to be honest a lot of my neighbors I could hear strumming and I was kind of sitting there going but why I don't want to be put at risk of their land catching fire and then coming over onto mine so it was a little bit tricky the last thing I want to show you guys before we end this tour are the fig trees they have taken tremendous strain and uh, from the sun and the figs have literally the same as with the grapes just shriveled up on the trees it's really sad I had some good harvests at least I was able to make a couple of pots of jam and a couple of whole fig preserves but unfortunately I think the rest of these are now goners and I'm not sure if I will get new harvests from these trees now And that's the end of our July farm tour. Check in again in August when I will do another one and I'll repeat them every month through the harvest season so you guys can see how things go and what I learn and how harvest progresses as well. I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.